welcome to the Flash Performance Garage where I'm gonna lay down some wood. I'm Chad from Flash Performance and I'm working on my tilt bed trailer. It's time to replace the deck on the trailer. I have absolutely destroyed it. You can see that the deck is absolutely dry rotted out. I tried putting a paint sealer on it a couple years ago and that, that didn't last very long. I actually broke through the deck here when I had a vehicle on it. And up here, before I bought it, someone had patched in a piece of board going all the way to the front. So there's lots of opportunity on this deck and lots of things that I can improve on it. But here's my challenge. One of the reasons I bought this trailer is because it is a tilt deck trailer and I can haul trucks, I can haul skid steers, excavators, it's a 12,000 pound rated trailer. The tilt deck, the way that it tilts is also the reason that I bought it. Because you'll be able to see the way the fender wells are are very low. That way when I have even a car on there, I can still open the door and I don't have to worry about hitting the door on the fender. There are other tilt deck trailers out in the market, but this one really met the needs that I had. This right here is the pivot point for the tilt and that causes this issue. When I have the trailer at full tilt to be able to load it, I'm running at a 15 degree angle. And that doesn't sound like a lot until you get back here and look at the tilt of the trailer. That's a pretty decent incline when you're trying to drive on there with a skid steer or an excavator, or my problem has been a front wheel drive car. When it came to choosing what decking I was gonna put on the trailer, there's not a whole lot of options out there. I could go with pressure treated pine and the benefit to pressure treated pine is it's very available for an 18 foot trailer. There's no issue there and it's relatively inexpensive. Now the downside and on my application is when pressure treated pine gets wet, it is very slippery. And that really came into play with this trailer and front wheel drive cars. If I'm trying to drive a front wheel drive vehicle onto this, it gets about a foot up and then the wheels start spinning. I can't get enough traction. So I have to really get going at it to be able to get up the trailer if it's damp, misty, or even raining outside. The other option was to go with a rough cut oak. A rough cut oak is a great solution because it does give you that texture, but I didn't want to go that way because there's still a lot of maintenance to it and it's really on the expensive side. And that's where industrial wood technology comes in with their new blackwood. This is blackwood, and what it is, is it's pressure treated pine with rubber embedded into the wood. So this is the top part of the trailer now, and now I have a rubber contact that I can drive up cars, I can drive up tracked vehicles to really solve all my slipping issues. And the fact that it's still pressure treated pine, we know that it's gonna last a long time. So I got this directly from Industrial Wood Technologies out of Texas. This is shipped to me via freight. You can also pick this up at PJ Trailers. And I would suggest going to check with your local trailer supplier to see if they have access to Industrial Wood Technologies in this new Blackwood product. So let's get the old deck taken off and get the Blackwood prepped for the new deck. At the back of the trailer, the way that the deck is tied in, there's this metal strip here that is welded into the back. So I have to take that metal strip off first and then I can start go through and take out all the screws to get the deck off. Now I could use a grinder to grind all those welds out, but why would I do that when I have a Cornwell plasma cutter? Let's burn some stuff down. Easy breezy. Now that I got that off, I can see all the ends of the boards and I can start working my way up towards the front of the trailer, taking all these boards out from the center 
and then working my way towards the outside. Now that I have the trailer all clean and painted, it's time to start putting the decking on. Now you have to cut these to your proper length. My trailer is an 18 foot, but it's a little bit shy, so I'm gonna cut it a little bit less. You wanna make sure you have a little bit of expansion at the ends for expansion and contraction of the boards. You don't want them to fit tight. But while I'm here, I wanted to show you this product. And this is a rubber embedded, pressure treated wood. And it's not just like a, a rubber tire tube that's laid on top of the wood and glued. This is actually ground up rubber and it looks like it's processed and compressed into the board. I've been looking at some of these boards and you'll see some with a little bit of a knot or uh, a little bit of an imperfection in the board and the rubber actually flows into those imperfections. So I can tell that this is not just a strip, that this is actually extruded into the board and pressurized into the board. Now I've already cut this one and you can't separate, you can't separate the rubber from it. It is really impregnated in there and made it all one piece. When I was talking to the guys at Industrial Wood Supply, I asked them about pallets. So occasionally I will have a pallet of concrete or something that needs to be put on the trailer. And when you put it on the trailer, sometimes they have to slide it across the trailer. And I was worried about it ripping up this rubber because I thought it was just like a piece of inner tube glued to the top of the wood and they called it good. That is definitely not the fact. The fact that it is embedded into the wood, they said they've done tests where they put a pallet of concrete onto the edge and they tried to drag it into the center of the trailer and it actually gripped so well that it destroyed the pallet as it went across the pieces of rubber. So make sure you consider that whenever you look at the black wood for your trailer, don't be sliding stuff across it. One of the other things is this has a great warranty on it, but it is not warrantied against metal track implements. So if you are trying to put a metal track dozer or something on your trailer, 
this is not made for that. So you have to go a different route. But all of your rubber tracked and tires, uh, this is a perfect solution for what you're trying to do. Now, part two of that is cutting this. This is a very grippy rubber. And when I tried to cut it with my saw on this side, the saw got stuck and couldn't go any farther. So make sure that you flip it over to the normal pine side to cut. And when you cut, make sure you go nice and slow. You can't just run through it like a normal piece of pine because you do have the rubber on the bottom and it's gripping onto the blade. So just go nice and slow across that. Uh, they actually recommend doing two cuts. If you have a, a chop saw, that's a great solution. A sliding chop saw is even better. Uh, I'm gonna be using a circular saw, just going nice and slow across that cut. So let's get these cut up. laid out, you'll notice that there's a total of 11 boards. So I have one board that's going to be absolute center. So what I want to do is I want to measure all the way from one side to the other and then cut it in half and put a mark. And then I'm going to measure the board center and put a mark. And I want those two to line up front and back. That way, visually, the boards are gonna look right. I'm gonna have one in the center and then I'll start pushing the other boards in on that board to make it look like it's even. Now, if I just went ahead and started screwing these down, it would look okay, but I've already gone to this much work and this much expense. I might as well make it look as professional as possible. So I'm gonna start with that one board. I'm gonna screw that one down and then I'm gonna pull all the other boards in and that way they're all tight and that'll make it look even and professional. The next step now that I have the front and rear screwed down is to take a chalk line and run that between those two points. I'm going to use some free child labor to hold one end and then mark in the middle where the middle of that board is. By doing this, we're going to make sure that there's no bow in this board and that'll be our perfect center point to start every other board off of. What do you think about that? Nothing? No comment? All right. To hold the deck down, I'm using some of these self-tapping screws. I'm gonna pre-drill all the holes, and I'm gonna put them in about an inch from the edge so it's just inside the rubber. Now, using these, I use a drill bit that's just smaller than the self-tapping part, and then this will pull down into the rubber. We don't wanna run this down too hard because the wood is much, much softer than the metal, and it'll just pull it right through. Um, if you go too hard. So we're going to pre-drill the holes. I've marked out my line here. Well, I'm putting two in each board on the front of the trailer, middle of the trailer, and back of the trailer.
It has been a long day, but I made some huge progress on this trailer. So if you're gonna do a project like this, make sure you leave yourself plenty of time or even maybe a couple of days and make sure that you plan out to know how much material you're gonna need. When I called Industrial Wood Technologies, I told them how big my trailer was, how wide. We worked on it together to make sure we had the right amount of product. I'm gonna put notes in the description below of all the products that I use in this video, including the Cornwall Plasma Cutter, Cornwall Welder, Bad Dog Tools, Grinding Wheel. So all that stuff is gonna be in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'm Chad from Flash Performance. I hope you found this educational and found a new product that might be right for you. Make sure you click a thumbs up, like, subscribe to the page. We'll talk to you soon.